I say this is a bit thick. This is a bit thick. Prancing without a word of warning into a man's private bedroom. Come along now. This isn't a bedroom and it certainly isn't yours. Eh? The significance of that uniform doesn't escape me, but I say to prance it on a man in his pyjamas, it... Oh. I see your point. I shall have to take your particulars. Name, please. Certainly. My name's... Uh, Names. Fajo. It's gone. Come along, don't try that. Bad show, quite gone. I'll give you one more chance. Who are you? Why, I, I, I can't remember. I'm, I, I, I Smith, am I Jones? I couldn't be Goldberg. What's your business here? I'm not engaged in business. I am not engaged in business. Is it King? King Fisher? Fish? Fosh? How did you come to be in these offices? I beg your pardon. I came here to see a fellow. Can't recollect if you saw him. I didn't see him. But I have an impression that he saw me. Do you realize that you're in a very compromising situation? I object to that adjective. You've been found on suspected premises? Quite. Can't explain your presence? Quite. Don't know who you are, what you are, why you came here? Quite. Do you know where you're going? At a rough guess, Scotland Yard. Quite. Uh -huh. Come along. Oh, paper. Search for missing flight abandoned. You can't do that. You're under arrest. But because a man's lost his memory, does it mean that he's lost the two o'clock? Come on. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, what one's the two o'clock? Sir Agnimore. Splendid. And the two thirty? Maiden's case. All oh, right. Give him the paper. Ah. Thank you, Inspector. Uh, in. Come in. Inspector Danger, sir. Yes, Inspector? We found this man asleep at number 15 Humphrey Street, sir. He refused all information. There were no identification marks, but we found this bunch of skeleton keys on him, so we brought him in. Special instructions. Take him straight to Major Hammond, Air Ministry DI-5. Very good, sir. Magnificent. Ned the lot. Come on. Good day. Inspector Davis, sir. Morning, Inspector. Morning. What's all this? Commissioner's orders. This man was arrested in the Humphrey Street operation. He's to be handed over to Major Hammond for interrogation. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, he's just come in. Perhaps you'll get Major Hammond to sign for him. I'll sign for him. Keep an eye on him, won't you? Don't worry, Inspector. I know the type. Hmm? This way, please. Oh, a second. My umbrella. Thank you. What do you mean, you know the type? Well, what's Major Hammond been doing to be brought here to be questioned by Major Hammond? Getting hit on the head like a clumsy amateur. What's the time? A little after four. Oh. Get me Portman, 2323. Two, three. Have a look at that, will you? Oh, so they've abandoned the search for the missing plane. Yes, can you beat it? Hello? Hello, Daphne, my darling. I'm awfully sorry. I shan't be able to have tea with you this afternoon. What? But, Charles, I'm all ready to go. Oh, I'm sure you look beautiful. But I just can't make it. We'll have dinner together tomorrow night. And, and Daphne, wh wear that new dress you were telling me about. But, Charles... There's something very, very important I have to tell you. Tell me tomorrow, my sweet. Must dash now. I'll call for you at eight. Why have they abandoned the search? Because, old boy, they think it's just another accident. Come over here a moment. March the 15th, the French Hirondelle on test off Toulon. Lost. An accident. The 4th of April, a double-day bomber lost off Los Angeles. Accident. May the 19th, from Kronstadt in Russia, the Rodensky bomber disappears. Another accident. Now, all these machines were carrying valuable experimental apparatus. Last week, off the Firth of Forth, Barrett and Ward test their Tunado Super X. Vanishes. Accident. September the 20th, London. Major Hammond makes an ass of himself, trying to find out why. Another accident. Almost a catastrophe. Yes, fools walk in where angels fear to tread. The world's full of wise men and only three fools. Three fools who don't think they were accidents. Monsieur Gambetta from France, Robert Hocker of the United States Intelligence, and your humble servant. 
Ask Marshal Gosport if he could see me, would you? Marshal Gosport can't be disturbed, sir. Who's with him? Mr. Barrett of Barrett and Ward. What, the plane manufacturer? Yes, sir. And I gather Mr. Barrett rather resents our inquiries at his factory. And I rather resent Mr. Barrett. Where will you be? Disturbing Gosport. Marshal Gosport's not to be disturbed. All right, you are. Let me tell you, sir, in my opinion, the only thing we can do is get... Ah, frankly, sorry, Marshal, I understood you were disengaged. That's all right, Hammond, come in. This is one of my ablest men, Mr. Barrett. Major Hammond. How do you do? As a matter of fact, it was Hammond who was pressing for this investigation of your factory. It's getting intolerable. Just because a firm carries a government subsidy, the moment there's a slightest accident, it has swarms of new Secret Service fellows nosing about the place and putting the wind up the workers. I tell you, industry's becoming unworkable. Yes, but you see, the point is... The point, I know the point. You can save your breath. Service and civil airplanes crash every day, don't they? Yes. Hundreds in a year. But you don't go spying about the Royal Air Force or liner company's works. We're engaged in extremely dangerous experimental work, and just because one airplane hasn't come back, down you come on us like a ton of bricks. And then out it all comes in the press. Inefficiency, sabotage in aircraft factories. I tell you, it's monstrous. Yes, but you know what the press is. They had to have a good story. Well, it's not good enough for me. Every man and every operation in my factory is under my personal supervision. I tell you, everything's absolutely okay. Have a cup of tea. I never touch the stuff, but uh, you've got a spot of uh, whiskey anywhere, don't you? No, no, no. Mr. Barrett, naturally, I appreciate your feelings, and I like your point about the whiskey. Forgive me if I got a bit overheated, but we're industrious, sir. Spreading our shorts, trying to help you official fellows out of the spot you got yourself in over rearmament. Well, it's a bit hard if you come down on us like this. Yes, Mr. Barrett, a few months ago, there was a similar disappearance of one of our high-speed aircraft off the Isle of Wight. Oh, how's that? Oh, thank you. It went up, never returned. Not a trace was found, not even a fragment of wreckage washed up. Now, in the past year, machines on test flight have disappeared from Bordeaux, Toulon, Los Angeles, Kronstadt, all these machines carrying valuable secret experimental apparatus. Now, is that coincidence? <laughs> there he goes, there he goes. <laughs> you know, I sympathize with you fellows. Your job's sensationalism, and you're bound to look at everything like a strange melodrama. Well, I forgive you. We hope you won't forget us. Well, thank you, gentlemen. You rely on me to keep you posted. If I need you, I'll send for you. Meanwhile, carry on. Good afternoon. The more machines are to disappear into the blue. I think it would be a good idea if you were to cast your eye over his plant. Unofficially, of course, you understand. I'll give you every facility, but if he finds you out, you're acting against instructions. The Nelson touch. He's testing out the new QE-97 tomorrow. I've detailed Commander Robinson. Perhaps you'd better accompany him. Very good. After all, in my position, you know, I've got to go slow with these industrial magnets. The safety of the country depends on their goodwill. And their goodwill extends about as far as their subsidies. Viking off on another job, eh? Yes, she's been commissioned to recover the gold from the Panther. The Panther? Oh, yes, I remember. She went down with all hands in 1922 in a fog, didn't she? Yes, and she went down deep. <laughs> this is a tough job. <laughs> oh, urgent message to the Viking, sir. Well, Carl? A wireless message from the Viking, sir. They located the wreck of the Panther and they start diving operations at once. Ah. You were notified, Lloyds? It's all clear. Oh, though I haven't notified them the Vikings taking up their new position. Why have you not? You know the regulations? In all conscience, it is difficult enough to do business in this country when one observes the regulations. When one does not observe the regulations... I'm sorry, I let them know at once. Yes, at once, please. This is the most important commission this company has had. Much depends on it. Certainly, McVeigh. Come along. Well, what is it? Shall I go, sir? No, no, Jenkins. You stay here. Don't mind him. Get it off your chest, McVeigh. Well, sir, I'd very much like to take up the new ship. I dare say you would, sir, with the other lads. Oh, yes, I know, sir, but I thought that perhaps after what happened to Griggs and his We won't you... discuss that, McVeigh. The crew will be chosen by lot. Yeah, but you see, sir, I'm the only unmarried pilot here now. Climate cure that, no doubt. Yes, but, sir, We won't you... argue that, McVeigh. Ah, he's a pig-headed old son, sir. Well, I know you're the best pilot we've got, McVeigh. Well, how would you manage that? Have you ever been up in the air? No, but I mean, it's obvious all the fellows say so. That it's keeping you back, because you're not a yes man. Maybe you're thinking of changing your job. I'm pretty well known in the trade. I can easily get you fixed up. Oh, well, thanks. Here's my card. Might drop in and have a chat. 25 Elder Street. <laughs> thanks. Well, she's ready to go, sir. Mm. He's a nice job, a beautiful job. Ideal conditions. She should jump up the record several notches. Gagin! You got those instructions? There they are, sir. Sealed as you directed. Right. What about the cruiser? I'll see them there. We can't take too many precautions. Air Minister of Plane arriving. Good. We'll get off just after we land. Come along immediately.
How do you do, Commander? Mr. Barrett? This is our designer, Mr. Pollock. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? The ship's just over here. Have you come along, sir? Thanks. I say. Should you be all right here? Yes, we'll move her up for you. Ah, thank you. Got a cigarette? Yes. Thanks. That's all right. of whiskey, but I suppose I shall have to have some of your rotten tea. Well, we have two kinds of rotten tea, Indian or China. Pretty fresh for a new girl, aren't you? All new things should be fresh. Uh, skip it and bring you some coffee. They're having that test flight today, aren't they? It's only a rumor. Who's to be pilot? How do I know? Hmm? Spence getting on your nerves, huh? Well, keeping it standing around like this for hours on end, it's like going over the top. You can hardly blame them for being cautious, after losing poor Mr. Griggs and that crew. That was before you came here, wasn't it? Yes, I heard about it. He must have been very popular. Yeah. Your best friend? Yes. What do you think happened? Well, if they give me that plane today, maybe I'd be able to answer your question. Get us the real truth, huh? Two more cups of tea, beautiful, and this time leave out the tomato soup. Coming up, handsome. Ah, oh, that's the first thing she's got right since she's been here. Hello, McVeigh. Anything fresh? Yeah. Oh, she'll learn. Well, what did the old man say? The crews will be chosen by lot. It seems such a dumb way to go along. It puts the wind up everybody. Yes, I expect every clerk in Whitehall knows which one of us is going up, when and in what. No, I expect we'll read it in the papers. They don't have any difficulty in finding out things. Other people from the newspaper reports know what goes on here. Aha, uh -huh, the black hand at work. Griggs knew when he went up. Evidently somebody else knew too. And that's why he didn't come back. Are you suggesting Griggs sold out? I'm suggesting nothing. Except that aeroplanes don't just go to the air and stay there. Now, now boys, no tail spins in the canteen. How are you, rat poison? Like a packet of cigarettes, a box of matches, and a kiss. Cigarettes, matches. Only one shilling, please. You're a nice little bit, aren't you? I'm my mother's favorite child. That's lucky. Something tells me she'll be having you back in her hand shortly. Oh, shut up, Jenkins. She only started here today. Yes, when she finishes tonight. Who's that? That's Jenkins. Barrett's confidential clerk. Nice person. Yes, charming. I'm sorry you got to say. Doesn't matter. I'm used to it. Stand by, please. Stand by, please. The following to report immediately to number five hangar on special duty. Pilot John Peters. Pilot John Peters. Now we know. Well, good luck, Pilot John. John Peters. Observer Jerry Nichols. Observer Jerry oh. Nichols. Observer so Jerry Nichols. Navigation officer Al McKenzie. Navigation officer Al McKenzie. That's me, boys. Good luck. Navigation Let me have your book. Don't lose my face. Well, here we go, boys. Oh, nice. So the lot didn't fall in Elisha after all, eh? Well, Peter didn't seem very keen about going. He's been mumbling all day about presentiments. And why have they broken up the crews? Your Sparks, my observer, and Wilson's navigator. They probably think each crew's in the favor of a different government. And if they mix us all up, it'll be all right, because then we shan't be able to agree which foreign power to sell out to. Here's the course, Peters. Take things easy until you're sure of yourself. You don't know what you may be running into. I understand. Well, get off and good luck here. Thank you. Climbing the speed test. Cloud level 5,000. Cloud level 5,000. Airspeed 225. 
Airspeed 225 miles per hour. 225 miles an hour. She's got the old type beat. Much the same, much the same. Go on, you're too modest, my half, old man. Off Land's End and making for open sea. Off Land's End, making for open sea. Should be along any time now. Hello, Ray Room. Let us know immediately you intercept the plane's wireless. Aye, aye, sir. We'll report immediately you intercept the plane's wireless. I've got them. Coming through now, sir. Do not lose them. Wait. Ray Room's here in their wireless reports now. Good. Stand by for speed test. Stand by for speed test. 302. Air speed 302 miles per hour. Air speed 302 miles per hour. Speed now 302 miles an hour. Speed now 302 miles an hour. This 70,000 meters south by southwest. Make sure there are no other ships near us. Speed 330 miles per hour. Speed now 330. She'll do it, she'll do it. 330 miles an hour. Speed now 330 miles an hour. 330 miles an hour. Then on the footing, turn 327. 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 Radio transmission received from aircraft E-97. E-97 now coming through on speed now. Radio transmission received from aircraft E-97. 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 Speed now 350. Inform the plane, the plane is switched on. We've got it! Good! Both engines cut. Report to the control. It's next day, something's blown inside. Contact with Peters is completely cut, sir. Well, get the chutes, we'll have to bail out. Keep on trying, man, keep on trying. Must be only a radio breakdown, mustn't it, Pollock? I hope so. Dump as much petrol as you can and turn off the mains. There's a ship below. Good, what is it? Well, it looks like a tractor. I hope he brings her down gently. We'll circle and pancake down. Good. Hope she won't have to dredge for us. Be away for the derrick. Both of Aye, aye, sir. Feel away to follow derrick and stand by. Aye, aye, sir. Alongside the plane. So ahead both. Go ahead both. Stop! Stop. Swing out the derricks and bring her aboard. Swing out the derricks and bring her aboard! Make a fast and heave away. Make a fast and heave away.
Looks like a proper rescue. Get down. Bolton! Take them below. Aye, aye, sir. Absolutely no trace, sir. I've drawn a blank everywhere. Hello, we've lost contact with Peters. Position last reported, ten miles out to see all plans in. Send up every plane you've got and search for it. Back thing! Back thing! Peters has faded out. What? what? Ten miles off Land's End. Did he radio any trouble? Not a word. They were transmitting they were doing 440 when the whole work's cut out. Their set must have caved in. Even if they're down, they should have been picked up. I don't believe it. He's gone the same way as Griggs. Stand by, please. Stand by, please. All pilots and mechanics report outside the first hangar immediately. That's us, boys. <laughs> Daddy, wasn't you, Mr. McBain? Well, what does it matter who it was? What about Peters? Was he married? Yeah. And the children? Boy and a girl. Where do they live? In Highgate. Why? Why do you want to know? Oh, just curious. Well, aren't you going out to look for them? Ah, of course I'm going. We're all going, but it's too late. Let me know what happened. You'll read it in the papers. It was spread over the course, fan like. Back thing, you keep getting on it. The others will be five miles apart on either side. You understand? Yes, right, sir. Very well, then get off. We have warned the Admiralty to have a search patrol standing by. But they won't act until your last pilot is reported. But they have all reported except McVane. What's he playing at? The rest have been back an hour. That may be a good sign. Perhaps he's found something. What do you think, sir? Name landing, Mr. Barrett. Ah, that'll be McVane. Well, come on, man. What did you find? Didn't you find anything? What the blazes have you been doing all this time? What do you think I've been doing? Joyriding? Been back and forth over the course of half a dozen times. Not a trace. The Savonia outward bound, a few trawlers, and the Viking on a salvage job. None of them reported a thing. No sign of oil? Why did you come back sooner, raising our hopes like this? We thought you'd found something. You're so optimistic, it's touching. That plane was lost the moment it ever left the ground. What's that? What are you suggesting? Come on out with it. Let's get this thing straight. You're criticizing the pilot. I see your little game. You're not doing any such thing. That pilot was one of the best you ever had in your books. The plane, eh? He's trying to say the type isn't airworthy. worthy. not saying any such thing. The plane was 100%. Well, what are you insinuating? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Anybody would see it but you. And you won't admit it because you can't face the fact that there's something very wrong with your entire factory here. Those planes didn't just disappear. There's more to it. Don't say This is a very serious charge, a terrible charge at a moment like this. You've said this before publicly in front of witnesses. It's lucky for you that I don't take you to court. My advice to you is to keep your eyes off the yellow press and your mouth shut. Yeah, I know you'd like everybody's mouth shut. If you have anything more to say, say it off my payroll. You want me any more tonight, sir? What's that? I said, is there anything else I can do tonight, sir? You can tell me what's happened to my aeroplane. Well, as a matter of fact, sir, if you, if you could excuse me, I, I know the wives of the men pretty well, and I thought I might prepare them for the bad news. Sir. What news? Is it certain there's still hope? Oh, yes, sir, I know there's still hope, but even then I thought it might be kinder to... I'll do what you like, get out of here. Yes. Well, what do you make of it, eh? What do you make of it? Losing two aeroplanes, one after the other, it must be some defect. It must be. There can't be anything in that nonsense that Hammond was talking about enemy agents. Perhaps it isn't nonsense. Supposing it is enemy agents. Supposing they have got hold of that new supercharger. 
What supercharger? Well, the supercharger we were trying out, Jeff. But the new supercharger wasn't on the aeroplane. What are you talking about? But you sent us instructions to have it changed. I? What are you, mad? Well, here's your note. I never sent you any note. Well, you signed it. I never signed anything. But that isn't my signature. Then whose is it? It's mine. What the blazes are you doing in my works? I've shared your view as to the importance of your new supercharger, so I thought we'd better have it removed from the plane for this flight. Did you tell us anything about this? No. Oh. I resent your intrusion in my factory, Hammond. I won't say any more at the moment, as I can't deny you saved a very valuable piece of apparatus. But in view of your means of achieving your end... In view of your attitude, I don't think I'll come in. Good night. Well, you're going to sit here all night? Do you have any objection? No. Are you all right? Yes, thank you. Why wouldn't I be? I was worried about you. Why? Well, the others have been back for over an hour, and I thought maybe something had happened to you. No. I see. It's very kind of you. No news, I suppose? Nothing. Vanished. Could they have drifted off that course? Not possible. Scott was reporting to the control tower right up until... To what? Okay, why do you ask so many infernal questions? Just wanted to know. Do you mind if I ask just one more question? Well? What are you going to do now? Well, what I want to do is to go to Whitehall and create such a stink with the Air Ministry that Barrett and half the British Intelligence Department will put up against a war and just liquidate it. What I'm going to do is to get drunk. Mind if I join you? No. I don't mind. I don't mind who I'm with tonight. I'll change and meet you in the car park. Right. Sent her 6,000. News editor, please. Kay Lawrence here. Hello, Kay. All right, go ahead. Continuation of plane disappearance story. Radio cut out as plane attaining maximum speed. Radio has questioned all ships in vicinity, but plane not sighted. Factor squadron wide search, fruitless. Last search plane just returned and have questioned Chief Test Pilot McVeigh. Won't talk, but suspect sabotage. Missing crew. Pilot John Peters, Observer Jay Nichols, Navigation R. Mackenzie, Radio C. Scott. Peters married, two children, one girl, one boy. And spending the evening with them, they will ring again later. Good girl. Pull it up for all it's worth, and I'll hold more space for you. Okay. So that's it. Just a rotten little newspaper woman. On the contrary, rather a good one. Just a lying little sneak, playing the sympathetic girlfriend to a bunch of fellows half mad because some of their pals have cracked up trying to do a decent job of work. It doesn't occur to you that I'm trying to do a decent job of work, too? Spying on people's jobs and private lives so that a bunch of illiterate scribblers can serve up a lot of sensation trash for the morning bacon. The public have a right to know the truth about their own affairs. Who employs you? Who pays the bill for that smug flying field superior of yours, of all of you? The public. Ah, sounds fine and dandy, doesn't it? Noble. Go ahead, justify your paycheck. Do you think I like having to write about Peters and the rest when I knew them? Do you think they got a square deal? Do you? Didn't you say that what you ought to do was to go straight to the Air Ministry, if you have the nerve? But you haven't. You're going to get drunk, so I'm doing something, anything I can do. If you don't dare tell the authorities, at least I can tell the public. Tell them that some of their best pilots are being sacrificed to obstinacy in somebody's precious pride. Griggs yesterday, Peter today, and maybe you tomorrow. Yes, you tomorrow. What about that? But at least I wouldn't have to see you again. Coming. Oh, Carl, what is it? Just had a code message through from the banking. Something seems to have gone wrong. They didn't get the plane. What? But they did get the plane. It is even in the newspaper. Yes, they got a plane, but the new supercharger wasn't fitted to it. What? But that is... Well, what is your explanation? Perhaps Jenkins can explain when he arrives. Jenkins? You do not think he will walk out? No. At least not until he's paid. Mm. This is extremely serious, gentlemen. Now we shall have to wait for another test flight. To wait may mean the Tower of London. But to go back without the supercharger would mean... Yes? Take it. Bring that chair. And you let him in. I'm sorry, I'm late. I'm afraid I had some difficulty in getting away from the office. Everything went marvelously, didn't it? Marvelously. Well, suppose we talk a bit of business, eh? Certainly. Sit down. <laughs> now, Jenkins, what exactly is your game? Game? 
You've got the plague, it's in the papers. There were no newspaper men aboard the ship. Salvage costs money, you know. Our salvage costs a great deal of money. Besides, it is dangerous. I do not like to sacrifice good lives on account of wrong information. Wrong information? The new supercharger was not fitted to that plane. What? But I, I don't understand. No, neither do we. But I, well, you don't think that I... No, we don't think. We are sure. Well, I mean, I will naturally. I, I'll, I'll investigate. I'll make inquiries. You will do nothing. You have already done enough. Jenkins, you are lying. No, I'm not. I swear Shut up. What do you want me to do? Put yourself in a safe place if you can find one. Now, get out. Well, don't take it so much to heart. After all, a miss is as good as a mile. Yes, but don't you see they meant to keep me? Yes, yes now, look here. Let's calm down a bit. Let's go for a little walk. Tell me, who, who meant to do what? Listen, I had a row with those men. They've been pumping around in their car. They tried to run me over. In any way, it's my business. Let me go. No, no, that's no way to treat a man who snatched you from the jaws of death. Admittedly, you're a trifle rattled, but I, I think I know a cure for that. Come inside. <laughs> Uh, two double brandies, please, miss. There's four beers and two ales in front of you. So my friend here isn't feeling very well. Oh? Oh, he does look a bit off. That should settle your complaint. complaint? Wind up. Mm -hmm. I never saw anyone so petrified with fear in all my life. Neat? Very neat. Now, drink that down and have another. I must admit, we're doing our best to nurse you back to health. Well, you're all right, but I don't see why you want to bother about me. Oh, now, that's my weakness. Can't keep my nose out of other people's business. I'd like you to keep yours out of mind. Oh, in a bit of a jam? Mm -hmm. Well, suppose I am. Well, you seem to be running away from something. Or was it someone? What's your line of business? Oh, I used to do a spot of flying. Not that you'd know anything about that. Uh -huh. What are the odds? Do you work for Barrett and Ward? Have you seen me before? I seem to have seen quite a lot of you recently. But been uh, following me? No, I've been waiting for you to come home. You live at number 25 Elder Street, just across the road. You a copper? No, if I were, you'd be very glad to see me. Or would you rather see some of those other friends of yours? What do you mean? If I were a copper, I'd lock you up for giving away your country's secrets. As it is, I'm more interested in the people that are paying you. They'll bump you off, Jenkins. But then, of course, you know that, don't you? What? What do you want me to do? I'll do anything. But supposing we go across to your place and have a little chat. What? Oh. You'd never have got a word out of me if it hadn't been. Come in. Sit down. Ah, comfortable. You'd never got a word out of me if it hadn't been for that dirty lot of rats. Oh? How many rats? Oh, plenty. One of them... a lady rat? As a matter of fact, there is a girl. She's marvelous. I can't get her out of my mind. I can't do anything because of her. I can't eat or sleep or, or think. Hello, hello. Hello, 
Daphne, my darling, I'm awfully sorry I shan't be able to have dinner with you tonight. But, darling, I'm all ready to go. Oh, I'm sure you look beautiful, but I just can't make it. Look here, we'll go riding together in the morning. I'll call for you at eight. Darling, there's something I must tell you. Tell me tomorrow, my sweet. I can't stop now. I'll call for you at eight. Oh, is Mr. Jenkins here? Yes. Can I see him? Well, he's uh, lying down at the moment. Oh. You a pal of his? Oh, I know him. Oh, good show, good show. Why? Got an appointment with him? Not exactly. He asked me to come and see him. He's a clerk where I work. Oh, Barrett and Wards. Good show. Barrett and Wards. You seem to be very well up in everything. Well, news gets round. Look here, I want to see Mr. Jenkins. And so you shall. Stop that. Dial 999. Hello. Miss, the police, please. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, is that the police? I'm at 25 Elder Street. There's a man here who's been shot dead, and I've got the fellow who did it. Will you send someone around at once, please? And bring a van. And bring a van. Why a van? We don't want to walk, do we? I suppose you realize the spot you're in. Uh-huh. I dare say I caught you at rather an awkward moment. Yes, very. I was just trying to think. You realize this man was shot by a bullet fired through that window? And where do you come in? I'm the bloke that's looking for the missing planes. I have an official status, but I don't carry a truncheon. Uh, you, you just carry a gun? Yes, but if you'll examine that gun, you'll see that it's not been fired. Oh. Well, why was he killed? To account rendered and fully paid for one aeroplane and four lives. You mean Jenkins gave the show away? Exactly. And now we know so much about each other, perhaps you'll let me have my gun back. Yes. You know, old boy, to fire this gun, you must release the safety catch. <laughs> Good night, Inspector. Good night, sir. It's been charged. Ah. Oh, a second. Thanks. Come and meet Blenkinsop. He's a perfect swine. Good evening, Blenkinsop. Good evening, sir. Rather late. We have your white tie laid out, sir. We can lay it away again. Have we forgotten we have an engagement? No, we have not forgotten, but we've cancelled it. We'll lose our young lady if we're not careful. We shall also lose our gentleman's gentleman, if we don't mind our own business. Have some whiskey. Not so, Mr. Ah. Yes, busy about Jenkins getting bumped off. Poor fellow. It happened a moment too soon. That's the point. He was about to talk. Then we might have had something to go on. It's about time he did, isn't it? Huh? Well, look here. Patterson Ward built the best airplanes in the world. Some of the best fellows in the world drive the guts out of them so that we can learn how to build better ones, risking their necks for a few pounds a week. And then eight of our boys and two machines disappear into the blue and a bloke gets murdered. A new Secret Service chaps are still waiting for something to go on. It doesn't sound very slick to me. Working miracles is part of our daily job, but there are bound to be jams now and again. You know, you're like the press and a lot of other people. You say the Secret Service is lying down on a sacked a lot of them, and the press say... Now, here's... Evening, Miss. Boys. Major Camden. Here's yes, something to visit no. sales above the I'll two wait. million mark. Uh, but, uh, Secret uh, Service fooled by foreign agents, British espionage, and the pay of foreign powers. Excuse me, sir. You're excused. I know the girl who wrote this, Trish. What? Yeah. Got herself taken on as a waitress at our place. Got on easy terms with some of the fellows pretending to sympathize, you know. And all the while, she was a newspaper reporter, ferreting out the inside dope, vicious little brat. She was a your factory canteen posing as a waitress. Yeah, why don't you put a stop to that sort of thing? I'm going to put a stop to it. I'm going to put a stop to it this very night. Sir. Sir, to you, go away. I've stood about enough from this young lady. And female. the pity of it is she's not a bad-looking girl. If she'd been on the level, I, I might almost have fallen for her. What she wants is a darn good spanking. Spanking? If I had my way, I... <laughs> you there. Why didn't Blink and Sock tell me? Yes, sir. Did I or did I not tell you I wanted everything connected with this cute plane case kept out of your wretched little news rag? You did, darling. Then would you kindly explain with what precise object you thought fit to go back on our understanding? I didn't know there was an understanding. Now, don't. Well, darling, you can hardly call yourself jumping up and down and telling me to be quiet every time I open my mouth an understanding. If so, I'm afraid it was a misunderstanding. On your part. Every word published about this case is a serious handicap to me in the prosecution of my profession. And what about my profession as a journalist? Good heavens, you're surely not going to compare the relative importance of our two professions. How dare you? A job's a job. Just because I happen to do mine efficiently, you fall down on yours, that's your affair. 
Don't expect me to get a new job. Get one for yourself. Something you can do. A bartender or something. Change my job. This is my sister. Now, look here, Kay. This is serious. This is Mac Vane, one of Barrett and Ward's pilots. We've uh, met. Yes, we've met. Your sister? Yes, we all have our burdens to carry. Now, Charles, dear, I don't mind you entertaining crooks or drunks or even people from your club. But I do draw the line of bumptious, ill-mannered prigs. Yes, well, I'd have done anything I could to help you, Hammond, old man. But if it means coming into contact with this heartless, two-faced, our Miss Fleet Street, 1938, you can count me out. Of course, I've met some queer specimens of humanity since I took up reporting, but never once... Oh, yes, I... yes, we, we know all about them. We've read all about them in the papers. All about their private lives, what they think oh, when they were married. Kindness, when they were... Stop, please. Don't stop, go on. I'm on your side. I'd like to say for my part... You better on, then. You'll find it all over the front page in the morning. Don't worry, you won't find that on the front page. What you will find is that it takes more than a thin test pilot and a fat secret survey agent to muscle the press. And if both of them lie down in their jobs, and the aeroplanes get pinched right from under their noses, we'll see what a two-faced female reporter can do about it. Good night. There you are. There's the modern woman for you. She's a grand girl, isn't she? Women, women, what should we do without them? I tell you, McVean, I love everything about them. They're touching loyalty. They're astonishing self-sacrifice. And they're still more astonishing sacrifice of everybody else. Their modesty. Their conceit. They're preposterous dress, they're ridiculous hats. They're silly little handbags with a pathetic little bunch of things they carry around inside them. Little purses, mirrors, sticky lipsticks, nonsensical compacts. Compacts. Blenkinsop? Sir? We're going out. A white tie and tail. But I've just laid them away, sir. Now, what do you mean by it? You knew I was going out. You told me you'd cancelled it. How could I have cancelled it when I've only just thought of it? Yes. Uh, excuse me, sir. Is uh, anything I can do for you? Yes, I've called to see Miss Sonia... Eh? Um, Miss Sonia... Oh, do you happen to mean Miss Sonia Blake, sir? Miss Blake, that's it, Miss mm. Blake. Is she expecting you? Oh, yes. And the name is, um... I'm her friend, Mr. Jenkins. Oh, no, you're not Mr. Jenkins. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, sir. Oh, yes, I am, really. Look here. Here's my card. Well, uh, maybe you are a bit like Mr. Jenkins. Ah. Uh, I'll just ring, sir. Good show, good show. Yes, been running for six months now. Oh, must be good show. Oh, it is a jolly good show. Uh, a Mr. Jenkins is here. What's that? Oh, coming right down, sir. Mind if I use your mirror? Oh, help so. Y'all want to see me? Uh, oh, uh, are, are you Miss Sonia Blick? No, she's a little fair girl. Oh, do you think I can see her? Does she want to see you? It's a surprise. Miss Blake don't like surprises. I still hope she might like me. <laughs> yes, sir. I think she's going to like you all right. Come with me. Uh -huh. That's how there's talking. Hey, Miss Sonia's talk. always talking. Here's me, a well-educated girl from one of the best families in Kansas, setting out in the world for the lovely ideals and beautiful thoughts, working myself to the bone, giving my best to the public and my employers, struggling with a lot of dumb managers who are too stupid to recognize the talents of a real artist. And then along comes Cupid and steals into my tired heart. And what happens? The silly dumb guy goes and gets himself bumped off. It's cruel. It's heartless, and it's downright inconsiderate. It's terrible. Yeah, and here with me, all lit up with love for the guy. Why, well, I'd even decide to sacrifice my art and marry him. Why'd he get bumped off? Well, I don't know. I haven't the slightest idea. He must have got mixed up in something crooked. Well, if he did, he didn't tell me anything about it. What was his business, anyway? Oh, he was a gold diver or something. A gold diver? Yeah, well, he said something about going down and digging up gold from the bottom of the ocean. What do you mean, digging for gold at the bottom of the ocean? Don't ask me. Who did the police think did it? Oh, they don't know. They've asked me thousands of questions. I don't know anything about it. All I know is I sure did love that guy. I don't know how I want a face life without him. Did you see Miss Anya? Yes, I did. Would you give her that, please? Yes, sir. Sure. Sure. 19 Dover Square. Did you see her? Yes, I saw her. She's a perfect blank. Right. Less enthusiasm, please. This is Britain. Well, a story is a story. Even in Britain, that is this a story. If it's yours, it's a pack of lies. Isn't that what you want? Jenkins was in Barrett and Ward's. Yes, I saw him in the canteen. He sacked me. And you murdered him? Yes. That wouldn't have surprised me. Well, if you don't want it, I'll take it across the street as a scoop. Plane disappears. Secret service man on the premises. Confidential clerk murdered. Major Hammond battled. Scoop! It's a 
steam shovel. Hey! Hold that front page. What do I tell? Get down to the works. Find out all the know about Jenkins. You're onto the biggest thing since that film star was bitten by an oyster and I love you. Oh, that's enthusiasm, please. This is Britain. I cannot congratulate you. Not to get the supercharger was unfortunate. But to court publicity by killing this little crook, it was criminal. But I said no guns. Carl, did I not say no guns? Why did you have to use a gun? We had no choice. I told you he was in his back with that Major Hammond. Hammond? Who is he? Espionage. Uh -huh. You must shoot, Hammond. You will not shoot, Hammond. Shoot, shoot. All you say is shoot. You have properly put the wind up. You will probably cancel the test, and we shall have the whole force after us. Uh, unless... Unless what, Baron? Unless we can restore confidence. I think I have a way to restore confidence. And the Baron always has a way. Lucky for you, my friend. No. This is what you shall do. Good morning, sir. Have you read the paper this morning? Now, Blinken, sir, how could I have read the paper this morning? Shall I read it to you, sir? No, I can read, you fool. Miss Kay's been at it again, sir. Uh, 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 uh. Major Hammond, baffled. Why don't you try corporal punishment? She ought to be hanged. Oh, a message from Mr. Barrett, sir. Will you call the office immediately? Most urgent. Barrett? Barrett? Urgent? What's up? Why didn't you tell me? I have told you, sir. Get out of here, you fool. Pour me out yes. a cup of tea. Hello, Daphne, my darling. I'm awfully sorry. I can't come riding with you this morning. But, Charles, I'm all ready to go. I know you look beautiful. But I've ordered the horses. I'm sure you can explain things to them, my dear. Charles, there's something I simply must talk to you about. Can't stop now. We'll dine at Claridge's. I'll call for you at eight. Mr. Barrett, Major Hammond. to see you. Do you mind my pipe? No, no sit down. I presume we want to discuss the Jenkins affair. Yes, it's a terrible business. It's beginning to make me think. Well, then perhaps Jenkins didn't die in bed. Who could have done such a horrible, cold-blooded thing? Some horrible, cold-blooded people. Now, don't tell me there wasn't a woman in it. I don't, but she wasn't the cause of the crime. Merely the recipient of the reward of treachery. Now, keep it simple, Hammond. You know I can't cope with literary expressions. Mr. Barrett, two of your aeroplanes have mysteriously disappeared. Your confidential secretary has been no less mysteriously murdered. Would it be too much to suggest that these three events are linked? There may be something in what you say. Now, I believe that Jenkins was linked to the people who were responsible for the disappearance of your aircraft. I believe that they killed him because they thought that he'd let them down. Let them down? Double-crossed them when they didn't get the supercharger. Well, Hammond, I never thought I'd come round to your way of thinking. Now, I'm beginning to say that it must be... So... Now, what did I tell you? Foul play, indeed. I never heard such nonsense. Take a look at that. The wreckage of the E-97 has been found washed up in Cornwall. Thank heaven it arrived before I made a perfect ass of myself. I always said it was an accident, and this proves that I'm right. I don't think we need continue this little interview any longer. Are you going to dismiss the affair, I think? Certainly. Everything's explained. What about Jenkins' murder? The least said about him, the better. Getting mixed up in a dirty little crime to passion, it's terrible. It's, it's horrible. Good morning. Mr. Barrett, you're wasted here. With your genius for sitting on either side of the fence, you ought to be in the government. Were it not for your resilience, which denotes a remarkable career as a tennis ball. Stroud, the wreckage of the E-97 has been found washed up in Gorbal. Prepare the 131 for test tomorrow. Morning, sir. Morning. Marshal Gosport wishes to see you at once. Mr. Barrett has been, been on, on the, the phone, phone this morning, morning and Marshal Gosford has read, read the morning, morning paper. paper. Well, Hammond, I hope now you're satisfied. Are you satisfied? Not about this. I suppose if I object to this constant publicity you're getting, you'll tell me it's part of an ingenious plan. Well, it is a plan, but not mine. Did you ever have a sister? Fortunately not. Hammond, you'll have to check up this aeroplane business. It's not pleasant to be proved wrong. Ah, a man may be proved wrong and yet be right. That statement's a sophistry. And that's the word I want, sophistry. You behaved extremely rashly. You persisted in your theories on the flimsiest grounds. I know all this balderdash in the newspapers. It's most damaging, Hammond. It's not like you. I agree. You'll be best out of the country till the ridicule dies down. There's a nasty little business needs investigating in Palestine. It's right down your street. What about Jenkins' murder? Jenkins was involved with some woman. You told me so yourself. Yes, but she'd nothing to do with the case. I explored that gold mine. 
What about Jenkins selling aeroplane information? What about the same aeroplane being washed up in Cornwall? So what about the first aeroplane that was lost? Will eventually be washed up somewhere else. So you insist that I'm wrong? Yes. What does that remind you of? West African tribal murders. Was I right when Blackwell of the Colonial Office said I was crazy? <laughs> you were both right. When did I send you that? Yes, yes, you were right in the Burmese Amber case, the Chilean nitrates, the Assam tea poisoners, and the Times crossword last Friday. All the same, you leave for Palestine on Saturday. Saturday. Today is Wednesday. What are my orders in the meantime? Oh, finish your puzzle. Yes, perhaps I will. Perhaps I will. Perhaps you what, sir? Finish the puzzle. Sophistry. Uh-uh, you're wrong. No. I'm right. I'm absolutely right. I couldn't be wrong. I'm right. I'm absolutely, absolutely, absolutely right. I'm right. Uh. You're right. Yes. Quite right. Okay, Governor. Jenkins is murdered, planes vanish. I know I'm right. We're right. We're right. I'm sure we're right. Here we are, sir. I'm right, Blenkinsop. Who said you were wrong? Sir? Everybody. They're wrong. You're right. Are we any carrots? Yes, sir. Parsnips? Yes. Cabbages? Yes. Sausages? Yes. Onions? Yes. Garlic? No. Good. Well, McVeigh, do you want to see me? No, you wanted to see me. We'll settle that later. We're testing the one thing we went tomorrow at daybreak. I've been thinking how we should pilot the ship. Do you think you'll be at proof? You can cut the pompous condescension, Mr. Barrett. I know you're in a spot for a pilot. I know you hate my guts, and I know you'd rather die than admit you need me, but you can't get away with it. What? If you want me to take that ship up, you'll have to ask me decently, or else explain to the air ministry that your pilots think such a lot of you that they won't fly a plane. But you don't believe that nonsense about a horrible mystery, do you? Yes, I do. I've been shouting at you for the last week. That's why I wanted to go. All right, all right. Will you, as a personal favor, take that plane up? Well, of course I will, you parboiled, pudding minded, myopic deadhead. Now, mind you, bring it down again, or. I know, I'll be off the payroll. How's that? Major Hamilton? Yes, he's in, in a stew. Something eating you? No, something they're going to eat. What are you talking about, Blankensop? He's got one of those there. What? Where? In there. See it for yourself, sir. An old boy. You're wrong. Aha! It seems I've been wrong all the time. It does. Ballard says so. He does. Gosport says so. He does. The press says so. They do. And now I say so. Ah, hold that, will you? Yes. Oh, no, no. You see, it was obviously an accident. <laughs> you ask me, it was intentional. It was an accident in the first place. Naturally. It was an accident in France. Naturally. It was an accident in the States. You said it. And so I'm wrong. Completely, utterly, abysmally wrong. Then they take me off the case. <laughs> That's wonderful. That, that, that's perfect. What's up? They've taken you off the case and I'm taking up the 131 at daybreak tomorrow. You are? Is that fool sending you that? Oh, la belle France. Oh, oui, oui. Oui, ah, la belle France. Paris, la gaieté. C'est romantique. Oui, oui. C'est un monument, ça, capitaine. Very unfunny and very bad French. But it doesn't matter because I'm not a newspaper spy anymore. I've got the sack. Why? I was wrong. Wrong? Come inside. You're one of us. You know Mac Bain? We've, We've met. met. Have a carrot. Thank you. You know, my darling, when you were a little girl, you had a room upstairs absolutely charming with red curtains. I'm already in it. No, you're not. You're down here making a nuisance of yourself. Now, run along. Have you read the newspapers? We have. Well, in my opinion, the Cornwall wreckage wasn't washed up. Kay, send Lincoln's off down here. You go on your flight tomorrow morning? Yes. With the new supercharger on board? Yes. Do you know your route yet? Not yet. Do you know how to cook? Not yet. Well, you can start right now. You sent to me, sir? Yes, drink in some. Take a bag. We're going away. Where to? Seashore. What about the shoe? You can post it on to me. 
Hey, hey, come here a moment. Why this sudden dash to the Caesar? Why not? I'm afraid you've got me there. Yes? Be a good girl and stay by the telephone. I may need you. Right. Oh, and Kay, don't let that fellow spoil the stew. I'll do my best. All right, sir. Ah. <clears throat> Seriously, why don't you get yourself a husband? That's all. Oh, anywhere? You'd have no difficulty? No. Oh, not if you put your mind to it. Oh, my mind. Yes, good women are scarce. You'd make a grand wife, honestly. Because I can cook? Oh, that is a selling point. I suppose you don't want a nice plain cook. Me? Hmm. What ever made you think that? Pass me the pepper, please. Mm -hmm. Think of the advantages of marriage. Well, at least you wouldn't have to go tramping around making an ass of yourself just to earn money. I take that to be a description of newspaper reporting? Well, all that sort of thing. I mean, a married woman doesn't have to descend to vulgarities just to keep herself going. Of all the pompous, conceited snobs I have ever met, you are the most insufferable. Do you know that for one appalling moment I thought you were going to propose to me? Unluckily, I was wrong. Otherwise, I would have had the great pleasure of telling you that life with you would be just exactly my idea of purgatory. I hope I never set eyes on you again. Goodbye. Oh, I uh, forgot I'm living here. As I can't bounce out of the house, would you mind removing yourself? Tempering or souvenir hunting while this was on the beach? The local copper sat on it until we arrived. That's his trade run. Mm -hmm. This wreckage hasn't been in the sea 48 hours. No corrosion. Look here. Look. Fresh as when it left the works. Well, she might have crashed on a rock and been dragged off and the tide ran particularly high. Yes, I suppose the sea took a wrench and snapped this off. And look here. Held it in a vice here to do the trick. Wonderful. Where's the engine? Well, probably sank when she broke up. Yes, I suppose the sea undid this nut to get the engine off. And then put the nut back again. Unfortunately, it forgot the split pin, very careless of the sea. This plane never met with an accident at all. She was broken up. And whoever did it has kept the engine and the accessories. Who found the stuff, anyway? A fisherman named uh, Matter. Probably be at the local pub. What a moment to lose. What for? They open at six. Coming? Sorry. Ah. She went fishing for sand eels and found an aeroplane, eh? Oh, I lost my breakfast, I reckon. Another pint of breakfast for Matter. <laughs> Thank you, sir. What, what time of day was it? Early morning. You have to cut the turn of the tide for sand eels, and she turned about quarter four six last Tuesday. And being the nips. Nips. Hey, do you mean the neat low tide, sir? I mean the nips. Not much wind to blowing in shore. She just run out fast. Yes, well, the wreckage came in shore. Maybe she come over the bar, and the bar kept her. The bar? He do mean the whale's back out yonder. I mean the bar. Well, how much water would there be at high tide over the bar during the nips? On a calm night, not more than four or five feet. Well, it looks as if that wreckage knew the channel, eh? <laughs> That's right. How'd it be if it were towed into the harbor? I reckon him as Torton would claim salvage. <laughs> <laughs> salvage. That's the way to coin money. Aye. Ah, take the Viking out yonder. There's salvage for you. Right digging for gold, and knowing it's there. Digging for gold? Aye. Raising the gold from the panther. Digging for gold? The fellow called Jenkins ever come down here from London? No, sir. Who'll row me out to the Viking? it would be a long row. She up anchor night afore last. What? I, I heard they said they couldn't do no more this season. Have you got a telephone here? Aye, sir. Right through here. But you have to go around there. Who is that fella? I don't know. I never seen him before. <laughs> he talks a lot, don't he? Hello, hello. Hello, I want to speak to London. Give me Portman, 2323. Hello. Hello, Daphne, my darling. I'm dreadfully sorry. I can't possibly have dinner with you this evening. Not I. 
I'm all ready to go. Oh, I'm sure you look beautiful, but I just can't make it. Look here. I'll call at your flat on Saturday. Now listen, Charles. You must listen. I've something very important to say to you. Tell me on Saturday, my sweet, must dash now. Charles, will you be here tomorrow definitely? Oh, definitely, Daphne. Hello? Hello, hello. Is that you, Kay? Yes, Charles. How are you enjoying yourself? What's the weather like? Now, there's no time for asking silly questions. Listen, you've got to go to Lloyd's, you understand? Lloyd's, shipping register. Find out the movements over the last two years of a salvage vessel called the Viking. Viking. E-V-I-V-I-K, Viking, Viking. Ah, salvage vessel. That's the one. February 38, off Toulon. Off Toulon? February 38. April the 20th of Los Angeles. Of Los Angeles? April 20th? July the 9th of Kronstadt. Of Kronstadt? July the 9th? September 17th of Cornish Coast. Left October 10th. Where is she now? Last reported off the Welsh coast. And her destination? Bound for Merlin Bay. Merlin Bay. Thank you. Yeah. What, what? What's, what's the new destination? Sailing up the Welsh coast towards Merlin Bay. But, listen, Kay, this is desperately important. There's a test flight at dawn tomorrow morning from Barrett and Ward over Merlin Bay. I'm going there immediately. You've got to stop that flight. Now, see Barrett, see Gosport. I'll have conclusive evidence. Stop the flight? How? They won't listen to you. What on earth do you think I can do? You've got to stop that flight. McVane's the pilot. Do everything you can. McVane? But why didn't you... I'll do something. Did you jump in the car, sir? Yes. You think you can take me to Penn's End Station? The last time she did the job, she didn't like it. Oh, I'm really surprised. Ah, oh, it's a tiny step. Well, step on it, sir. Wait. Here you are, McVeigh. Now, don't forget, with this new supercharger, your pressure is practically a little under a thousand revs, but she goes up at a much sharper curve than the old type. Teaching me how to fly a plane now, eh? Ah, you're impossible. Go over those stays. I've been over them, Well, sir. go over them again and do something with that. Now then, miss, what's your business? I must see Mr. Barrett. That's quite impossible, miss. Well, can't you get him on the house telephone? Tell him I must see him. Aren't you the young newspaper lady that was in the canteen? Is Mr. McVeigh in the hangar? Uh, you a friend of his? I'm, I'm his fiance. Don't you see, I must see him before he goes up, you understand? Well, uh, strictly against orders, miss, but, uh, young, tell Mr. McVeigh and his fiancée's here. Tell Mr. McVeigh and his fiancée's here. Tell Mr. McVeigh and his fiancée's here. Come on, McVeigh, let's get the ship out so you can get off. All right, boys, warm her up and fill her up. Now, look, I'm rather worried about this. We don't know how the pistols are going to take it, so don't give her the gun until you get right out over the sea. Go away, Miss Barrett, go away. Go and put your head in the gas mask. You don't want to put the head in the, the gas mask. I don't want the main gate, sir. Who by? Gentleman's fiancé, sir. Fiancé? hasn't got a fiancé. Send the young lady away. Just a minute. What's she look like? Fairly dark. Pretty pretty. Why, well, I think I'd better see her. What? You have got a fiancé? You never told me. Anyway, what's she doing here? Well, I don't know. I suppose she's just come to say goodbye. You would have done that before. Now, look here, McVeigh. I'm taking no chances. You're going up now, and you're seeing nobody until you come down again. Send the young lady away. Just a minute. Give her that, will you? Any message? Oh, say that he said goodbye, darling. Yes, that's right. Say I said goodbye, darling. Say he said goodbye, darling. Say he said goodbye, darling. Said Thank goodbye. you, Mr. Barrett. Thompson, don't you know how to move a plane? Course. Well, goodbye, McVeigh. I shan't forget you're doing this, particularly in the circumstances. Now, see what you can get out of the bus, and you won't need to worry about the future, as long as I'm in charge here. Well, that won't be for long. <laughs> she loaded? Yes, all Swing right. Swing around, boys! Isn't that the test plane? Well, it uh, might be. Well, they're getting ready to go up. Please let me in. Now, then, calm yourself, please. That won't get you in, you know. Oh, no, but the plane's going to be wrecked. He'll be killed. Oh, Sergeant, please! Back, I'll turn the place into a toy factory. They're taken off. They're going to be killed. Uh, please, uh, please. Just a minute. Just... Here's a watchman. 
Well, Mr. McVeigh asked me to give you this. And the message? He said, tell her I said goodbye, darling. Well, that's what he said. Cruising at normal revs. Cruising at normal revs. Zero boost. Zero boost. Off Welsh coast. Yeah, yeah. Altitude 8,000 feet. Altitude 8,000 feet. Airspeed 385 miles per hour. Airspeed 385 miles per hour. Airspeed 385 miles per hour. Visibility very good. McVean is going to give a full boost now. McVean is going to give a full boost now. He'll do it this time. Aircraft E131 approaching 40 miles south. Aircraft E131 approaching approximately 40 miles south. Aircraft E-131 coming very fast. Aircraft E-131 coming very fast. Ah, oh, got him. Rich, the plane's in focus now. Right. Gas speed now 410 miles per hour. Boost plus five. Contact. Out. Tell control both engines are going out. This ship's dead. The whole thing's used. Ah. We've cut out our engine, sir. She's coming down. She's died in this house. It repeats itself. Get ready to bail out? Ship below. Where? There. We're in luck. In luck. Well, we'll soon see. Well, we've got what we're after this time. Put her down nice and neat, Mac. I don't like bathing. Keep your seats, gentlemen, please. Here we are, lads. Now what do you think? We'll get aboard that ship if we're lucky. But not lowering any boats. No, that's my guess. They'll come alongside, take the whole plane aboard, and put us with Peters and Griggs. Very much like the other one. With one exception. Yes. Yeah, Mr. McVean, I believe. Yes. I congratulate you on your handling of your machine. Thank you. You made a better landing than Mr. Peters. You no doubt have a better head in emergencies. Yes, I have. Either you send out an SOS for a ship to take us all off immediately, or I'll blow up the petrol tanks and we all go up in smoke. Oh, see. Take them away. Put them with the others. Take him out. Full speed ahead. Full speed ahead. How are you feeling now? As if I've been caressing the wrong end of the machine gun. Same thing happened to you, eh? Engines yeah. cut out, radio shorted. Yes, and we floated down like a swan to be rescued by a gallant crew headed by a sardonic foreign gentleman complete with eyeglass and moustache. Wait till you beat the skipper. Oh, yes, I'm looking forward to that. But have you found out anything since you've been here? No, we've been confined to quarters and on a diet of silence. Ah. Well, they must have had some kind of a gadget to bring us down like that. I wish I could get a little round. What do you expect to find? Well, Marconi was working on a ray when he died. He could cut a motor car engine at 25 yards. These fellas must have perfected it for long distance. That's an idea. Well, let's lodge a complaint. A big one. I don't like it here. Come on, let's get out of here. Make for the home port. Thank you. 
hombres. Yes, and I got your destroyer. But if you're making a fool of me, I haven't helped you. This is Commander Mason. Hi, Major. Major. We got the Vikings position. Good. How soon can we get off? As soon as you get on. Sorry to interrupt your fishing, but I hope we'll hook you something bigger. I hope so. Signal the 
destroyer not to fire. Tell them we're heaving to. They've signaled not to fire. They're heaving to. Now signal this. You? They're signaling again. Can't make it out. Read it off, young man. You were right, Charles. Aha! I was right. Good old Tony. K was right. What the place is this, all this? And the whole world was wrong. That's right. Thank you, Commander. Good heavens, darling. Look at the time. We must fly. Well, goodbye, old boy. Goodbye. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. I know you wish us all the happiness in the world. Goodbye. 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 I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> 